Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bibliophiles. This is the program on AADL TV, where each episode we take a few minutes to talk about a book that is concerning one topic. And the books that we are going to talk about today all come from the National Book Award 5 Under 35 prize. This is a prize that was started by the National Book Award Foundation in 2006, and it was started to recognize young debut authors who other authors thought had a really promising future in writing. So each one of the five every year is picked by a previous winner or nominee of the National Book Award. And since it started in 2006 and has gone now through 2024, we had a lot of books to choose from. So I am really excited to hear what you chose. I am here with Christopher and Amanda as usual. And um, Christopher, what did you bring? Well, I was so happy to learn about this prize. I really wasn't aware of it before. And the book I chose was not on the current list, I believe, but it was from a few years ago. And I read Happy Like This. This is by Ashley Wurzbacher. And this is a collection of short stories. You know that I do love short stories. This is 10 stories in the book. And they uh, are not exactly dense stories, but there are so many layers packed into each one. I was about halfway through the book and I realized that these are not just stories about women, but they're really about relationships between women, sisters, daughters, students, lovers, uh, strangers. It's really fascinating, and I think that theme is really woven through the book, whether the author really intended it to be that evident or not. Um, so I think the main characters in each of the stories have a very similar voice, so much so that I could almost imagine them being different avatars of each other. That's not a criticism of the book. I really appreciated the voice that all these characters have. It's not exactly feeling trapped. It's not exactly an indecision about how to live their lives. It's more of this general discontent and unhappiness and not seeing a clear way forward in many things in their life. So I really appreciated that a lot. Like one of my other favorite authors who writes short stories, Kelly Link, there are a few uh, elements of uh, not exactly supernatural, but just odd things that happen that don't really need to be explained. In one story, there are dead birds that just fall from the sky. That has really nothing to do with the main story at all. It's just kind of the backdrop for a relationship story of these little school girls and how they exclude someone and include other people. So uh, I really, really enjoyed this. I was so happy to learn about her and this book. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. Happy Like This by Ashley Wurzbacher. So Amanda, what did you read? All right. So as usual, I didn't know what to pick for this, but I decided to read an older book that has been recommended to me a few times. Um, the book Turner, The Turner House by Angela Flournoy. This book came out in 2015 and it was a debut novel for the author, as is with these with those folks who win this prize. And it takes place in Detroit on Yarrow Street. And the Turners have lived on Yarrow Street in Detroit for over 50 years. And the mom and dad, Francis and Viola, they came over and got the house in the forties. And then they have raised 13 children and who grew up in that house over time. And the present day in the book is 2008. And you've got the adult children and the mom, the father has long since died, but the mother, the older mother Viola is still alive, but she's sick and she can't live in the house anymore. So the Turner children have to come together and decide as a group what they're going to do with the house. They find out that the house is they're paying, the mom is paying more on the mortgage than the house is even worth. So they need to decide what to do with it. Um, so you've got a lot of characters in the book, but you're, it's never lost upon you what decade you're in or who is speaking and what their relationships are. It's so fluid. 
Um, there are three of the Turner children that we spend the mo most time with as adults. I, mean, I guess as, a, as kids too. Um, there's Layla and Layla is the youngest sister and she has a gambling addiction and she's actually squatting in the Turner house. Um, she's kind of in between things. And then there is another brother named Troy and Troy kind of, he's a man with plan. He wants to figure it out and he wants to put the house in his girlfriend's name so they can keep the house, but it affects the payments differently. And then there's the oldest brother, Chacha, Charles. And Chacha is the one, he is the oldest one. And for some of the siblings, he's he's a lot older than them. So he's been like sort of the, the father figure, the man of the house or the family for several years. So he feels like it's up to him to kind of lead the way. But he also lost his job and he has having, when he was younger, he saw a ghost or a hint in the house when he was really small. And he, the, he that is reappearing to him now as an older man. So he's struggling with that. So this is the three you, you spend a lot of time with. Um, but even though it spans so many decades, you just, you really fall in love with the family and the house. And it's sort of this, um, a book about like the American dream and leaving the South and coming up to Detroit and getting the house and trying to survive and raise your family, find enough money. Even now in 2008, like you've got like um, financial crisis going on and then just watching the house in the city of Detroit and their neighborhood like change over the years. And it's really cool to see the siblings and their interactions as adults, because there's a lot of siblings, there's a lot of grandbabies. So it's neat to see them over time. And again, the author, it's just beautiful. I don't know if she's done other books since then. I'm not aware. I didn't even look it up. But the writing is so wonderful. And you just, you follow along with the family. I actually listened to this book on audio a few months ago. And I like the narrator. There was a female narrator. Um, but there's a few words that are I know are Michigan related or Detroit related that the the audiobook narrator mispronounced, which I know is not a big deal. And I wish I would have made note of what they were just to give you some examples. Um, but just little things that were like mispronounced by the audiobook reader, but I'm like, hey, that's not how you say that. Um, but I also love the Detroit tie-in with this book. Apparently the author did not grow up or spend time in Detroit, but her father's family did. So she had that Detroit connection and she did a lot of research into getting things right for the author for Detroit. So yeah, so that is The Turner House by Angela Flournoy. And I do highly recommend it. It's a good book. Lucy, round us out. What'd you bring today? Um, well, those both sound really good and and so different from each other, which I think is like a really interesting thing about this whole list of books, the, like all the years of this prize. Um, although they're debut authors, they all bring something different to the table. So I also read a collection of stories. Um, this was from 2018 that it was picked. It's called Friday Black. And this is by Nana Kwame Ajay Renya. And um, these stories I would sort of describe as speculative fiction, um, kind of satirical. They're really like this surreal look at racism, at cultural unrest, at sort of like the fight, the actual fight for humanity um, in a place where people are really dehumanizing each other a lot. And th they're amazing stories. He is an amazing writer. And this is a collection that will stick with you for a long time if you read it. Um, the first story is called The Finkelstein Five. And it is about a man, a white man who, a white man who um, murders five black children outside of a public library by cutting their heads off with a chainsaw. And this happened after there were some killings, I think, in the library, but it's also just like, you know, in the era of George Floyd and a lot of other, I mean, it it, it doesn't really need speaking about why um, this story would be written, but the way that it's written is, is through the um, trial of the white man and how really ridiculous that trial is. And it's like very satirical, but it's one of those stories when it's the beginning of the collection, you're just like, okay, I am in for something here. This is really going to be um, quite a journey. And it, and it is, the stories kind of go all over the place. Um, there's a story where people can choose to sort of have their children enhanced. And if they don't, like what happens if you're not enhanced, how you get left behind and how other people treat you. That's really interesting. Um, there's a story called Zimmerland, which is, it's really looks into racism as a sport. Um, and it's about like a theme park that you go to and you can basically like 
um, pay to go into a scenario where you are armed if you choose to be and a suspicious character comes into your neighborhood and how do you interact with that person? And usually you have a gun, so you kill them. The people who are acting in the in the theme park are protected, but it just keeps replaying itself over and over and over. And so it's it's a really like straight on direct way to look at racism and all this cultural unrest, but it's also extremely well done satire. So, and then, so sometimes it's almost like funny and it's also just so compelling and, and thought provoking. Like I can't stop thinking about these stories. And, um, it was interesting to read. I read it when it first came out in 2018. And then I read, um, this author wrote a novel in 2023 called Chain Gang All Stars, which is probably one of my favorite books I've read in the past, I don't know, 10 years. And that really takes this idea of like racism as a sport further. It's sort of instead of going to prison, you can sort of be in this gladiator situation on a chain gang. And um, I just highly recommend that one. But it was interesting to go back and read these stories again, having read his novel because you can see like where the genesis of, of all of the novel is and you can see the development. And so I think that's a really cool thing about this prize as well. These are debut authors and there's so many collections of stories and even first novels. And because it's been going on so long, you know, you can go back and see what else that person has written since then. And it's a great way to um, sort of look at an author's development. So that is Friday Black by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. Um, do either of you have anything else to add about these books or other books? Well, as always, we hope that you will uh, comment and let us know if there are any five under 35 National Book Award winners that you would recommend. And I would also suggest that this is a great place to look for titles for books. It's a really good book list. I mean, there's it's huge and they're all good writers. So if you're looking for something to read, this is a good place to start. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.